Last year, if you guys watched this type of stream that we did, I was sitting next to Clint and I needed somewhat of a booster seat because no matter what I do on this stream or anywhere, I just can't seem to get the height differential there. So uh, Clint, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. Good to see you too, man. I know that, that we link up quite a bit on Zoom calls, but it's been a while since we saw each other in person, right? Yeah, it's been a bit, man. So uh, it, uh, how, how are you and the family doing during uh, quarantine and all that stuff? Uh, we're doing well. We're hanging in there. We've been, you know, staying home, playing our video games, you know, when we can. Uh, it's been interesting. How about y'all? It's good, man. It's good. I think the, you know, it's, it's very, it's a very interesting time, especially when it comes down to development. Um, I know for a lot of people that are watching this stream, um, things were very different last year. And this year, we're trying to kind of bring some of that stuff back to you guys, some level of normalcy um, in regards to what we're talking about regarding Madden. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, and I'm just being real, this is kind of nerve wracking for me doing this type of stream um, and everything. And it's just, it's kind of new. I'll be doing a lot of while we do this, I will be doing a lot of the management on my end to showcase to you guys some of the stuff that you may have seen. Uh, we have some new stuff to kind of share with you guys. Clint's going to go ahead and walk through all of that. Uh, but it's um, it's it's great. I'm glad that we're doing this. I think it's something that we need to do, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, But speaking of that, how has development been when it comes down to um, kind of this new landscape uh, that's where we're going through right now, Clint? Yeah, this has been uh, for us an, un an unprecedented year. The The team has been working from home since March. You know, uh, we were able to get the entire Madden development team set up to work from home within about three to four days. You know, when the when the quarantine first started in March, everyone grabbed their workstations, their kits. We have a great IT team that got everyone connected. And uh, I just want to take the opportunity to, to say thank you to the Madden team and tell them how inspirational they all are, because what they have been able to pull together uh, all remotely. We're going to be shipping a game completely remotely. Um, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I'm really proud to be a part of that group. And uh, on the same token, I, you know, I want to say thank you to all the players out there too, because they're going through the same struggles that we are and they're playing our games more than ever. And that's why we do this, right? We make the game so that our fans in this case can, can enjoy the sport that they love. Uh, so that's, you know, that's our motivation. That's why we come to work every day. And that's why we're going to ship this game from home. That's awesome, man. Uh, huge shout out also to Paige um, and everyone out there. Uh, Paige, she has done a phenomenal job. Paige, I know you're watching. Thanks for kind of getting everything from the overlay set up for us. I know Farrells and Gibbs and the rest of the team, uh, Gabby, they've been out there just trying to make sure that we get things up and running. The last time we did this stream, it was on 616. Uh, that was when we did the announce. And we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the things from announce. Uh, we also, uh, we had a deep dive trailer that went live on 623. Uh, you heard Sean Grady. Huge shout out to Sean Grady for kind of doing all the voiceover on that. Um, last year, when we were at EA Play, we did talk a lot at EA Play. We had kind of like that video where we walked, we kind of did a deep dive. This came a little bit earlier, and what the show today is to really talk about everything that is going on in the game that you may have seen, provide some more context. We got gridiron notes coming out later on, uh, but we're going to talk through these things. Kind of like, a, in a way, for me, putting this together felt a bit like a presentation, but we also have a lot of context, a lot of meat on the bone for you guys so that you hear it straight from Clint on um, what you guys may have seen. So with that being said, um, Clint, I know like last year, run defense, you know, run defense at the end of the day, um, you know, the run game, the run game meta, there was a lot of conversation around that. And I do want to go ahead and talk about that and lead into that. Um, what are we doing in Madden 21 when it comes down to the run game? Yeah, so we did a lot of things um, and it really revolves around our defensive gaps and run fit system. Uh, with a specific focus on force defenders and, you know, hammer and fill players in that run fit system. Uh, simply put, you know, Madden 20, it was too hard to stop the run for a lot of players and a lot of players relied on it because it was the safest thing to do. So uh, we did a number of things. They're all outlined in the blog that we're going to be releasing later. I'm going to talk about a few of those things. First of all, uh, relative to the force players, uh, the force defenders, what we did with them is it's all about pursuit and anticipation and making them get wide enough to actually set that edge. That's the force player's primary job against the run game is to set the edge. So I'm just going to go down the list here of a few things there. Uh, force defenders who are on the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped, they're going to use wider angles at the start of the play, and they're going to show more anticipation and better pursuit prediction about where the ball carrier is going to go to set the edge, especially versus outside running plays. 
Uh, we're also going to have force players using better anticipation and better angles at the start of the play when facing specifically quick hitting plays that are hitting the outside, such as jet sweep and touch pass, so that they'll get better position uh, to keep him inside and force him where their help is, which is the inside of the defense. And then we also updated some alignments in some of the base formations, such as 3-4, so that the force player on the line of scrimmage is aligned wider by default so he doesn't get reached by the uh, end man blocker uh, quite as easily. And then if we move over to the hammer and fill players who are the defenders who are responsible for the gap or gaps inside of the force player against outside run, really the story there is last year they got kind of caught up in traffic a little too much and weren't really helpful when the force player was able to force the ball carrier back inside. Uh, now they're gonna have a little bit wider gap integrity and they're taking wider initial pursuit angles at the beginning of the play. That's gonna help them get over the top of traffic more. Um, the best way to describe it's a little bit, of, a little bit more of a conservative pursuit angle at the start of the play, but conservative kind of has a negative connotation. So what it is really is a smarter angle anticipating the width of the back on those outside running plays. And then if we go down into blocking interactions, um, we do have some new and improved blocking interactions where defenders are gonna disrupt running lanes by pushing blockers into the backfield at the appropriate angles. And uh, defenders are also gonna have better anticipation for the ball carrier's movement when they're coming out of block. So when they hit that block shed animation, the angle at which they exit is gonna be relative to where they think the ball carrier is going to be. So there's gonna be less room to run both inside and outside the tackles. Okay. Um, so one of the things too, regarding all of that, regarding the run defense, there's all, you know, last year where there was a lot regarding, you know, audibles and play flips. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I know we talked about that, you know, early in some of our other meetings, but I know from the community perspective, that was one of the pain points last year. Yeah. As we kind of broke down everything that was going on with the run game last year, one of the things that really showed up a lot was this spamming of audibles and flipping plays in pre-play by the offense just until they, you know, they'd, they'd flip plays as many times as they could until they got an advantageous look in the run game. You know, more blockers on one side than the defense had defenders to that side of the center. So what we're doing this year to get a better run pass ratio is after your second audible or play flip in pre-play, the offensive line is going to be uh, more likely to commit a false start. And this is going to be used on all all game styles besides arcade. So it is active on competitive, is active on simulation. But on that third audible or flip play, the chance to get a false start kicks in. And then each corresponding one thereafter, that chance of a false start significantly increases. And the idea behind that is just simulating. And I can tell you this as, a, as an offensive lineman myself, if I'm down in my stance and the quarterback changes the play seven times, it's pretty likely I'm going to get a little bit confused and maybe false start occasionally. That's the inspiration behind this. There has to be some risk to that kind of behavior, and that's what this is. So it's it's introducing the idea to bring some strategic decision making to when you want to use those flip plays and audibles. Okay. In pre play. Good stuff, man. Um, I know uh, tackling was one of the things that we also um, there was a lot of sentiment and feedback regarding that, right? You know, tackling whether it was open field tackles or tacklings and tackling in general. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the tackling improvements coming to Madden Twenty One? Yeah. So. Everyone saw in our reveal trailers, they saw the breakdown tackles and they saw the pylon tackles, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but we didn't just do that. We did some more stuff to some of our um, legacy tackling systems. And, you know, just like the, the run fits, tackling is a very important part to stopping the run. So similar to what I talked about earlier with the defensive linemen shedding blocks more intelligently around the angle of the running back, uh, defenders out in open space are also going to be more aware uh, when they're near the ball carrier, especially versus like impact blocks. Some of the things that we saw last year is when a defender would get impact blocked, but he was very near the ball carrier. Sometimes he wouldn't react soon enough to that nearby ball carrier and you could just run right by him. So now no matter what point at which that animation starts for that impact block, he's going to be able to break out seamlessly to tackle the ball carrier. And then we also did some work to hit sticks and dive tackles. Uh, to make them a little bit more accessible and functional. Uh, that comes together with our new breakdown tackles for a little bit more user-friendly experience. What we did there is uh, basically you're going to feel your momentum respected a little bit. For example, dive tackles, a lot of times you would dive from behind the ball carrier and you felt like you were in range or gaining ground to make that tackle and you would just lose your momentum and kind of fall over. 
So you're going to continue that momentum through. And if you are actually gaining ground on the ball carrier, you're going to get at least a successful tackle attempt on that ball carrier. Yeah. And right now what I'm doing is I'm playing a clip and um, it's, it's actually from the deep dive trailer where it's a breakdown tackle with Lamar Jackson. And you know, it's, these are things that you guys have may have seen and we're kind of providing some context right there. I did show the Lamar image. I'll go ahead and show that again, Clint, cause you referenced it. Uh, that was all related to location based tackling. Um, but uh, I think you also see that in our video that we have in the premiere, uh, which was right here that I'm showing kind of the audiences right now if they've not seen it. But all these things that we're referencing right now are related to a lot of that stuff. Uh, also, there was, I think you'll see the clutch stops, the realistic open tackles that Clint, yeah, you've been talking about in that regard. So I'm just kind of cycling through these clips right now. For those people that may have not seen this, they're new uh, to this specific stream or checking it out. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and showcase exactly what you were talking about from the gameplay perspective on the breakdown yeah, tackle. Yeah, before. We, can, we can touch on some of the some of that deeper information on the location based tackles, too, which is what we referred to as pylon tackles. Yeah, let's um, do so, that. Uh, you know, pylon tackles is, is the most natural one because that's the most exciting play when the ball carrier is intelligent enough to reach for that, that pylon when he's in range to score a touchdown. But these are actually location based tackles, what we're talking about, and they can trigger at the pylon, the goal line, the first down sticks even the sideline. And what I really want to make clear to our players is this isn't an actual button mechanic. This is going to be driven primarily by ratings and then abilities thereafter. And the ratings that we're using to determine those outcomes and those interactions around reaching or failing to reach if the defender wins is the defensive tackle rating plus awareness versus the ball carrier vision rating plus awareness. So that's the matchup of those ratings. that's going to determine these outcomes on these. And really, I got to tell you, the Madden dev team is really excited about this feature. These have kind of bubbled up through our play testing as one of the favorites. People see these and they kind of geek out a little bit because they're really cool and they make our players, you know, feel alive, feel very smart about where they are on the field. Okay, good stuff. Uh, there's one thing that kind of excites me and it's basically, you know, zone coach, uh, zone drop coach adjustments. And I do have some screens. This is the kind of like the first time that we're showing some of these screens from in game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put them up on the screen. One of the things this year that I think some of our hardcore players are going to be excited about are the ability to go ahead and make these coaching adjustments for zone drops in the flats. Uh, you'll see here that's going to override the drop depth for hard flat, cloud flat, and soft squat zones. Um, not just that, but when we go ahead and look at the zone drops for the curl flats, you're going to override the drop depth for the curl flat, the quarter flat, and the seam flat zones. And then when we talk about the zone drops for the hooks, this is going to override the drop depth for the hook curl, the three um, red hook, and then the middle read and the uh, vertical hook zones. So I just kind of wanted to showcase that. Clint, I do have a screenshot up right now where I kind of went and I modified some of these settings uh, in coaching adjustments. I want you to talk a little bit about this because, again, this is a feature that probably not your average or casual Madden player is going to be aware about. Um, but it's going to be more for that hardcore individual that's been playing this and they want to have a little bit more, for lack of better words, customization or control when it comes to their specific zones. So do you want to go ahead and talk about that? I have the screenshot, the one that I think we're referencing in our run of show right now that I'm looking to my left, uh, where I kind of put the, the different yardages. Yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, our, our man, A-Dub, our, our resident expert, Anthony White, is really responsible for, for bringing this alive along in partnership with uh, RG, you know, from CGD. Um, they came together and really what they wanted to give players was a way to customize their zone drops to take away specific routes that their competitive, that their opponent had found against them and use it over and over. And some of the stock coverages aren't able to get, it, get enough leverage towards the sideline or enough leverage up the field. You can go into the coach adjustments and now customize all underneath zones in increments of five yards all the way to a max of 30 yards and put them exactly where you want them to play. Uh, what's really interesting about this is uh, it's gonna carry over play to play, but you can reset it in pre-play uh, by using the reset play option, which is specifically gonna be useful against no huddle offense. Um, and one thing that I, I need to call out is when you are using these coach adjustments, it is going to turn off all matching zone logic in the game for uh, all your zone defenders. And even though you cannot modify the depth of deep zoners, it will also turn off their matching logic when these are activated. Really important tip to remember when you use these, these cool zone drop coaching adjustments. 
Good stuff. Uh, so, you know, we talked about the run game a little bit and, you know, what we're doing in that space with run defense. Now, hopefully that opens up things in, in the passing game. And I want to talk to you about kind of the QB and passing improvements uh, that are going on. Can you talk a little bit about that? I'm going to go ahead and transition over here to the QB and passing improvements. And if you want to go ahead and give some context, I'm going to go ahead and play while you're talking through this, some of the video that we've had uh, in game already regarding this uh, that they may have seen in the deep dive trailer, but give us some information about the QB and passing improvements. Yeah, kind of coincidingly with the run game where it was kind of hard to stop the run in Madden 20. Uh, you know, we also saw and, and heard feedback that throwing the ball was a little bit too risky in some cases, in many cases. Um, and, and with a more balanced run game, obviously you're going to have to rely on the passing game more. So two of the things that I'm, you know, I'm really fired up about that are that are coming in Madden 21 are throws out of sacks. Last year it was kind of tied to abilities, so on and so forth. This year we have it, a more authentic and physics-based solution. Every quarterback is going to be able to throw out of a sack, and the accuracy of that throw and the power of that throw, and even the chance of the fumble of that throw is going to be determined by how long into that throw that quarterback is when contact occurs. So if you're very early in the throw and you get hit, you're more likely to throw a very inaccurate pass or even fumble. Whereas the longer, you know, you're into the animation, your arm is almost all the way forward. That's going to, that's going to uh, result in more accurate passes out of the sack. So it's basically completely dependent upon when the contact happens relative to the point at which the passing animation your quarterback is in. Okay. No, that's good to know. And I think one of the things I do want to highlight for those people that are watching the stream is that um, everything that you're seeing here, and you'll see it in some of the slide presentations that we're doing, that everything is a work in progress. So um, the game is still being developed. We're trying to show you guys a, some of the stuff that's very early on. Um, you know, you guys have seen some of the gameplay that's there. The team is going to continue to refine that. But I just want to call that out as a reminder that things that you're seeing um, are not completely final. It's still in the development cycle, but we wanted to make sure that we kind of provided you some of that information. Some stuff has been already put out there in the public that you may have seen in the gameplay trailer uh, that you may see in the deep dive and that's what we're kind of covering to give more context uh, but again just wanted to call that out um, now Clint I know last year um, don't don't, for, don't forget about the deep passes under pressure yeah so I have that actually here in the video uh, I'll go ahead and play it I think it's when Rogers uh, actually no it's it's um, uh, it's me uh, ugh, sorry um, I think I have it right here yes I do I have it right here you probably see it in this video uh, we're under pressure inaccurate so there's like a little bit of a clip right there that you'll see in the video uh apologies about that if you want to talk more about that we can uh, before well, we go into so defensive there's actually campaign. there's a new feature there's a new feature there that i think our players are going to be really excited about uh we have under pressure throws uh coming to madden 21 this year and what that means is on on specifically deep passes uh passes of 40 or more yards when your quarterback, whether it be AI controlled or user controlled, feels that pressure, he's going to contextually speed up his throwing animation to get the ball out quicker to avoid getting hit before he gets the ball out. So um, this is driven basically by what we call the, the threat to impact prediction. What this means is at the time of the pass, as soon as that button input has been received or as soon as the AI has decided they want to throw it, if the quarterback thinks he's going to be hit before the release of the pass, he'll use an under pressure throw. And then the throw under pressure rating, the TUP, is what will modify both the power and accuracy of the throw while using those specific throw types. Good stuff. And some of this stuff, guys, just a, a little bit of a heads up, it is actually going to be t detailed more in the gridiron notes that are going to release later tonight. So some of the stuff that we're showing you may not be full in depth on what we have in that deep dive article. So just a little bit of a heads up there so you guys are fully aware. Um, I know, Clint, last year, uh, we I know we talked about this a lot, was you know the, the, the meta of sending seven. Um, so this year, I know you guys did some defensive contain balancing. Do you want to talk about that before we get into player personnel packaging? Uh, yes, I do. Um, so this is one thing I, I really was excited to talk to the community about. Uh, coming off of Madden 20, uh, there was this belief that contain, contain rushers were actually faster and better pass rushers than non-contain rushers or regular pass rushers. And, you know, that's not necessarily true. They weren't moving any faster. They weren't, they didn't have any different pursuit angles than default pass rushers. But what was true is that they did get the benefit of being just as lethal as a pass rusher 
and also being able to react very quickly to a scrambling quarterback. And the balancing we did is specifically for those blitzes that people dial up, mostly overloads, where they can get the contained player unblocked by the offensive line. So what's going to happen in Madden 21 is when you're in contain and that contain player is unblocked, he's going to rush the quarterback slower and wider. He's going to take a wider angle around the pocket, and he's going to be moving slower so that he can better react to a scrambling quarterback while giving up a little power in the pass rush. Uh, the main, you know, the main idea, like I, like I said, uh, bringing balance to the defense to make more meaningful choices. You can't just stay and contain all day and, you know, have your cake and eat it too, for you know, lack of a better term. Uh, get a, a very lethal pass rush, but also be able to take away the scrambling quarterback who's trying to escape your pass rush. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, well, I know what player personnel packaging, I mean, you know, players like to be creative, you know, in their formation personnel on offense. I know you guys added some packages and formation subs while using audibles, and, and we have some screens specifically to that. Uh, I want you to, if, if you're cool with it, if you want to go ahead and walk us through some of that stuff and talk through it, I'm just going to go ahead and, and put them up here on the screen uh, while you talk about this specific thing. Again, this is more, this is kind of more specific for the hardcore. Your average player probably won't be, you know, so involved with this, but this is giving a little bit more control uh, to the players at this time. Yeah, I have a feeling a lot of our players are really going to like this because it lends itself to more creativity offensively. So our audible system is going to be customizable enough that it's going to take into account the actual personnel that you have the have on the field. And when you change your personnel in the play call menu, either either via the packages or the formation subs, all the pre-play audibles that you have available to you is going to be those plays in your playbook that matches that personnel. So if you're using 12 personnel, which is one running back and two tight ends in a formation like gun empty flex or some you know gun spread formation, you want to audible out of that, you're going to be able to audible out of that to any other play in your playbook with 12 personnel, such as a uh, single back ace, for example. Uh, for now, this feature only applies to the offense. It doesn't apply to the defense, uh, but we are continuing to look for opportunities to expand it to other areas of the game. Great stuff. Um, so I'm just cycling through these images again for those people that are just checking that out. I'm going to go ahead and start it again. But what Clinton was talking about is person, uh, uh, player personnel packaging. These are some images. You guys may have not seen these. And again, Clint, thank you so much. I really do appreciate the support of you and your team uh, getting me a build to capture some of this stuff for the community for this stream. I know they always do appreciate a little bit more information outside of what we officially release. So it's just kind of really great to kind of check that stuff out. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about player fatigue for out of position ball carriers. I know this was a thing last year um, and a yeah, frustration point for some players. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I do have a screenshot of that as well, but let's talk about that first. Yeah, this is another interesting change that is going to introduce the concept of workload management in our game. And the motivation for this change uh, really was one of our biggest attractors from Madden 20 was the rate at which scrambling quarterbacks fumbled. And I was pretty open with our community for years that we had to increase the fumbling, especially on competitive, because there really is no risk to putting your quarterback in harm's way like there is in the real NFL. And while there's still not going to be things like injuries on the competitive side of the game, uh, what this is going to do is to start making stamina and fatigue more of a factor. And this feature right here is basically if you are if you are featuring a gadget player as your primary ball carrier, what I mean by a gadget player is anybody whose natural position is not a running back, they are going to start to fatigue much faster, especially on hit sticks and tackles. And as that fatigue kicks in and you keep feeding that player the ball, you're going to see his performance drop. He's going to slow down. He's going to get tired. Eventually, he will start to fumble more as his uh, – I guess, as his ratings go down because he's tired. Um, so you're going to want to strategically use those plays. Really what I'm referring to is running things like Wildcat with Tyreek Hill taking the snap, uh, continuously running with our cover athlete, Lamar Jackson, you know, giving him 30 carries a game. Uh, it's going to carry some risk. You're going to have to make sure to manage his workload. And in some cases, even substitute them out of the game so they can regenerate that stamina. Good stuff. Um, one of the things I do want to talk about, you know, like last year for Madden 20, um, it was an abilities year, right? So there was a lot of stuff that went into abilities. Um, and 
I, you know, my personal experience has been playing Madden, you know, since Madden, Madden uh, 11 is that anytime there's like an introduction of some type of new feature in the game, it takes some time to kind of get an understanding of what's going on um, and, and how players are receiving it and how they're kind of using it. Can you talk, can we walk through some of the ability improvements that are happening? Because I know that was like a big conversation for a lot of players um, this year. So if we can go ahead and talk about that, I have some slides uh, over here regarding the ability balancing improvements that, that we're thinking about doing if you want to walk through some of those yeah before we dig in there's there's just a few things i want to mention to the community so first of all this is not all there's more um, this is just the first bit of information that we're talking about right now there's more ability information coming very soon both on abilities from last year and new abilities that we're really excited about the reason i mention that is because I just want to acknowledge that in the first year that we introduced the ability system, the X Factor Superstars into our game, uh, we call that game game context. And in our first year of game context, we acknowledge that some of them were unbalanced and, and made the gameplay unbalanced. And we made a, a conceited effort this year to go after a lot of those abilities and make them better. So I'm gonna just talk generally through some of the bigger beats. Um, there's four points here we're gonna cover. Uh, the first two are wide receiver route abilities and coverage defender abilities. So what you saw last year is these abilities were tied to a specific assignment or route, and it really required you to have a carnal knowledge of your playbook. And in some cases, you could only use the ability if you had the right hot routes. Uh, it made it very hard, but even more than that, it also, uh, they were still active, even though you weren't in the correct assignment via hot routes. So instead of tying them to assignments and routes, they're now tied to areas of the field. So last year, as an example, you may have seen a slant ability. Now that's gonna be like a short outside ability. So it's only gonna activate if the spot at which the ball has been thrown to that receiver is under 10 yards and outside the hash marks say. Got it. Um, so those abilities are only gonna be active in those specific areas of the field happens on offense, like I said, with the wide receiver route abilities, and the same thing on defense with the coverage abilities. Got it. And I also know you guys did some balancing regarding pass lead abilities. Yeah, so pass lead ab abilities from, from last year were fairly polarizing. Um, they did unlock some abilities to make some amazing plays and throw receivers open, but you know, often they were uncatchable and led, led too far. Uh, and they were out of reach. So in Madden 21, uh, we've actually taken out the increased pass leading on those abilities. And instead we've uh, replaced it with a velocity enhancement. So when those activate, you're gonna get a faster pass that reaches the receiver quicker. And it's gonna reduce the ability for defenders to make the play on the ball, um, especially when you make the correct read on offense. And it should be more powerful for pocket quarterbacks. Okay, good stuff. Uh, so one little note here regarding, uh, we're going to have more news on superstar X factors in July. So stay tuned to that. Um, there'll be some information coming out around that time frame. What I want to encourage you guys make sure to follow at Madden NFL direct. I'm um, also at EA Madden NFL, uh, for that information. The main channels are probably going to be sharing a lot of that stuff. Uh, but Madden at Madden NFL direct for a lot of the people that are here from good morning Madden. Um, that stay tuned to the show, um, we'll make sure to go ahead and, and retweet that information and go ahead and elevate that as well. Uh, what I have here uh, is that I want to talk about, you know, we saw this in the premiere, uh, which there was some videos regarding the run game. I, do, I don't want to skip over the run game. I know like this year, uh, the run game, it was a bit polarizing for some players. Um, and But I do want to talk about some of the stuff from a mechanics perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and play a video. This does have audio in it. Um, it does have some music in it. So I'm going to play this, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the run game and kind of some of those mechanics. All right, so let's talk about the run game, and uh, we're gonna go ahead. I, I think I have some images. You guys may have seen these images already um, when we went ahead and released this on 616. Uh, you see Saquon Barkley. You've probably heard the, the term Jurtle uh, from the 623 deep dive article 
um, our, our, our blog, uh, not blog, sorry, video that was put out, but we also have some controls. And I wanted to showcase this because I know anytime we go ahead and do something in game and we decide to go ahead and, and make some changes from a controller perspective, that's always helpful for our players. So Clint, I don't know if you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the run game mechanics uh, this year um, and kind of kind of the controller layout. Yeah, ab absolutely I do. Uh, there's some really important things here. And uh, I, I really want to start with why we created this ball carrier skill stick. So obviously, authentic visual quality. We want our, our movements to be more intuitive, more natural, most of all, more athletic. Uh, why the skill stick? Uh, combo moves. We want to create a skill game in the, in the running game so that really good players can get really good at using the skill stick and chain together moves. And all the evasive moves right now are on the right stick. And what's really important about that is you're, you're gonna see juke on the right stick as you always have a, a new move dead leg, which we're all crazy about, we love dead leg. That's a steerable move down. I shouldn't call it steerable. What it is is if you flick down on the right stick, you're gonna get a dead leg, which is a hard plant and change of direction. And then the way that you move the right stick out of that is going to determine which way you exit. That's a really nice move. And then you mentioned Jirtle, and that's the important part here. The evasive moves that are that can all be chained together are on right stick, and that means Hurdle is now on right stick. Hurdle has replaced Truck as right stick up, and then that's the same as Dead Leg. The way that you kind of swivel the stick at the top will give you a Jirtle, which is a combo between Juke and Hurdle, or a side Hurdle, which is what you're showing in those clips and then all the power moves are now on the face button so truck is on y got it what i want to say here and kralo you're going to kill me for this <laughs> um, when the beta goes live when the beta goes live i repeat uh we need the player's feedback we need you guys to test this out and, and let us know how you feel about that controller switch because it's been in a long time truck has been right stick up a long time Hurdle has been Y or Triangle a long time, and we changed that up on you. And I just want, want to let you guys know that that's not a final change. That can still go back to the way it was before if that's what the players tell us that they want. So we need your feedback. Uh, another important note I, I need to call out here, uh, some other minor, more minor controller mapping. Uh, just holding left trigger down is now the celebration locomotion. So you can... Uh, I don't know what the word is, get loose, taunt, whatever, as you run into the end zone. Uh, last year, it was a, th a three button combination to do that. And we found it to be pretty hard for most people to do. So that's now a one button on the left trigger or, or L2 button. And that means that there's no more steerable moves. And what's important about that is the steerable moves, which are the ones where you could dictate the exit angle out of your special move animation are going to be dictated by ratings. So the higher the rating, the more steerable that guy's special moves are going to be. Christian McCaffrey, for example, has really fluid steerable jukes and spins, whereas a, a lower rated ball carrier is, is a little bit less uh, steerable. So uh, all of these uh, changes together really are for the vision of chaining combo moves together, making amazing plays happen to evade the defense. And like I said, we want your feedback. And I think Agent K is probably going to get mad at me now. No, I'm not mad at all. Why would I be mad? I think what I'm mad right now is my lighting situation. Um, so for whoever decided to do these streams late at night, poor lighting at my house. Get me better lighting. That is all I'm going to say. Clint right here is looking like a boss with all those books and stuff like that. I, I need to get someone in production to help me out here. Uh, trust my room is not favorable for lighting. Uh, so again, um, it, if you're getting a lot of white glare, it's probably coming from my monitors. Uh, but no, not all. We'll talk a little bit about that. And I think it's a good point to call out Clint because I think at the end of the day, um, it's just important that we get player feedback on these things. Uh, I'll talk a little bit. You alluded to the beta. I will talk at the end of the stream about that uh, and what players can expect going forward. So uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about pass rush. Uh, so I do have a video with audio as well. I'm going to go ahead and play that. You guys may have seen this already. I ain't telling which we ain't going tip for tip. Try to tell me how to get back. I'm going to get the back. I'm just hoping she don't feel bad. Because what you do, I don't know what I'm going to do. All that did I heard that y'all was talking, it was pretty cool. Let's see what you're doing. 
All right, let's go ahead and talk about pass rush mechanics. So Clint, I got a lot here regarding pass rush mechanics. Now there was another video. This one doesn't have audio. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. Um, it it's on a loop, you know, and I think a lot of people when they saw this in the deep dive uh, video that, that Grady kind of voiced over, you, you see rush moves, you know, you see all the you speed rush, but there's also some indicators that if you look closely, you'll see some markers on the offensive lineman that I kind of want to talk about uh, now because I think the pass rush is 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 kind of a full package. There's a lot more going on there than just kind of the moves that you're going to be able to do. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go over to some screenshots that I have right here on the controller. So uh, if you want to talk about the pass rush mechanics on the controller, and then we'll talk about the offensive side of the ball. Um, I have this screenshot up right now from the game controls. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about here. We're going to talk about both offense and defense. And as, as our players know who saw our trailers already, uh, pretty straightforward. The, the pass rush moves are back on the right stick. Uh, yes, they, they were there years ago. Um, we've reimagined that system uh, very similar to our skill stick on offense. Branching is a thing we want you to have full control of not only the move you want. So if you want to do a rip, you hit the rip direction. If you want to do a spin, you spin the stick. You're going to get that animation and that move that you want every time with this right stick. And you're also going to be able to branch from move to move at any time. Uh, what Agent K is talking about is the other half of the story, which is the strategy and depth that we've built into pass rush. We're going to start on offense, then we'll go over to defense. What he's talking about underneath the offensive lineman, you're seeing some meters under there, and they, they were really easy to miss in the trailer. That is a new, new feature called blocker resistance. And what these blockers are doing that's being displayed in those meters are remembering the history uh, versus that pass rusher throughout the course of that game. So as you continue to beat him to a side, he's going to start remembering that you beat him to that side and build up resistance to that side. And it's going to make it harder for you to win to that side with your pass rush moves. And you're going to have to start countering back the other way. Another way to counter this is to change up your linemen, your defensive linemen. So let's say I got Von Miller on the right. He's done a bunch of moves throughout the first half against the right tackle. The right tackle's built up some pretty good resistance and memory versus Von Miller. Switch Von Miller over to the left side switch Chubb over to the right side. Now that right tackle has no memory of Chubb because he hasn't blocked him up to that point in the game and it's a clean slate again. And what's really neat about this is if you switch him back and Vaughn goes back to the right, the right tackle remembers what mm -hmm. Vaughn did up to that point. So that blocker memory is going to stay consistent over the course of a game. It does not carry over game over game. It's just for a single game, resets every game and uh, really makes you have to be a little bit more strategic about how you want to use those pass rush moves. Now, more strategy in that vein is on the defensive side of the ball. If you look in our on-field trainer above the head, you're going to notice notches next to the pass rush move and the pass rush feedback. Those notches are the pass rushers budget of moves on that play. So if a pass rusher has five notches in his on-field trainer, he can do a maximum of five moves on that play. And you only regenerate one move between plays. And in some cases, you can regenerate more, albeit through abilities or halftime or two-minute warning. You may regenerate two. But when you run out of moves, you can no longer perform any pass rush moves. So you can't just spam moves over and over and over until you get a win. So the goal here is to bring more strategy and agency to the pass rush experience. And may I even say, challenge some lurkers to occasionally make decisions about when they want to control a pass rusher. So I'm at a game. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, good stuff. Thanks for your help on getting those images. I know we talked about this yesterday and, um, you know, when we're working through all these images, that was kind of a really good call out to kind of bring in. So I really do appreciate uh, you doing that. Uh, so that's pretty much a lot of the stuff that we had for today. I do want to let you guys know that Gridiron Notes, I'm checking right now with our team. I'm going to go ahead and type them and see if we do, if the Gridiron Notes are live. Um, let me see. I'm typing. 
Hopefully I get an answer. So Gridiron Notes, there's a deep dive uh, gameplay Gridiron Notes that Clint went ahead and wrote up. Make sure to go ahead and check with him. Uh, it looks like they are live, so that's great news. A uh, huge shout out to Not Gibbs. Uh, went ahead and posted the link. Uh, let us know that that is live. Go check that out. There's stuff in that deep dive uh, blog that we didn't cover today, so I just want to let you guys know about that. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, for those people that don't know, we do have the pre-order offers out there. Um, you know, you can go ahead and find them on our sites. I just wanted to cycle through them for any individuals that are kind of new to the stream and did not know if we have any pre-order offers. They are available on the Gridiron Notes, uh, which we did go ahead and talk about earlier. There is some, there are some details regarding the pre-order offers. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Now, the one thing that I want to go ahead and talk about is the Madden 21 closed beta. Clint alluded to it a little bit earlier, and I no, yes. I would never. Yes. Uh, Clint alluded to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that, you know, we've heard the chatter about the upcoming closed beta and we can confirm, you know, Clint confirmed it, that we're having a Madden 21 gameplay only focused closed beta in the coming weeks. Um, and uh, we'll let you guys know when that's going to happen. Uh, we, we did have plans for the beta to go live today, uh, but we had to push it out to a later date. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself on camera here. Um, so we did have plans for that to come out today. Um, unfortunately, it is not coming out today. It's, it's pushed out to a later date. Um, I don't have an exact date to share with you guys right now, um, but make sure to follow at uh, EA Madden NFL and also Madden NFL Direct for those details. Now, for all those people that were watching this stream back on 616, I teased out a link. Uh, don't worry. If you went ahead and signed up on that link, uh, you're going to be entered into that Madden 21 closed beta. Uh, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about kind of our learning. You know, as a community team, we don't work on the development team. We work very closely with Clint. Uh, we work very closely with, you know, the uh, Madden Ultimate team uh, when it comes down to kind of the stuff that they're doing so we can get that information and share with you guys. One of the things that we heard last year was a lot of people couldn't make it to EA Play. Um, and they weren't able to get codes or things like that. So we wanted to kind of, you know, with everything going on in the current situation, in the landscape of the world is, you know, how can we go ahead and continue to surprise and delight our players? I know at the end of the day, we all want an open beta, but unfortunately we can only do a closed beta, but we wanted to make sure that more people had access to the Madden 21 closed beta. So this year, for those people that were really, that have just been here, they're always here in the Good Morning Madden. We really do appreciate it. We wanted to get that registration link. That was what that registration link was for was so that you guys could get entered. I checked the numbers. I think everyone that did register should be entering into the Madden 21 closed beta. Um, the other thing that I want to highlight is that also there's going to be emails that are going to be going out um, closer to the beta when it does go live for players that are simply engaged in the game with their time. So players that are, you know, that are heavy engagers from a Madden Ultimate Team perspective, from just a franchise perspective, uh, there, there, there's a pool of codes that will be going out to those individuals uh, closer to that date. So we want to let you guys know that just simply engaging in Madden 20 this year, if you're a person that engaged, uh, there is a certain pool of it, those codes will go out for those individuals. Also, if for whatever reason you don't get a code, we'll have additional codes that we'll be giving out on social. So you want to make sure that you're following at EA Sports underscore Mutt, you're following at EA Madden NFL, you're following at Madden NFL Direct. Um, we also have uh, other individuals I'll be giving out codes. I'm sure Clint will probably be giving out codes. Um, but uh, we will. Throw me out there like that to the world. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, but there's going to be a lot of other ways and we're going to kind of keep our ears to the street for that um, and making sure that it becomes more accessible and more available because your feedback is really important. Um, and I think from a community team, the, the, the best thing that we can do uh, for our development partners um, is making sure that they get feedback on the things that, that they're really interested in. So, for example, you know, when Clint was talking about, you know, the run game mechanics, that feedback's really important, you know. And again, all of this is in development that we talked about today. So we really want that. Uh, again, the focus of the Madden NFL 21 closed beta, I'm just reading a note that I wrote for myself, uh, will be on getting specific feedback on gameplay um, around new additions to the game that were covered on stream. Uh, players that are in the Madden NFL 21 closed beta will be able to provide the feedback at a Madden NFL. 21 closed beta feedback portal um, you guys probably have seen some of that we're going to be using the same platform that we used last year because uh, it's really important to you guys and also it's a great way for us to quantify some of that feedback um, again at the end of the day uh, our feedback as players our feedback as community is just it is 
you know, it's really important, but you also have to be mindful. It is also kind of like one spoke in the wheel of feedback that we have to kind of take a look at holistically on how things are done. But I think there's some key things that are happening in Madden 21 uh, that you guys gave feedback on Madden 20 that the gameplay team is really trying to focus and zero in on to kind of provide a better experience. So I want to follow that up, Agent K. So just to reiterate, that beta feedback, whenever it is that we go live, is extremely important. And I can tell you, we read all of it. It doesn't matter uh, who it's from, where it's from, how long it is, how short it is, though I prefer short, I prefer shorter notes, uh, but we read every single thing that's written in there um, every day of the beta. Uh, so it is extremely important. That's the, that's the time that you can have the biggest impact on the way the game is gonna be played thereafter. So really important beta, and I, I hope as many people uh, who want to be a part of it can can be a part of it yeah and one thing i want to call out too and um i you know everything is a work in process and even that site is a work in pro uh in in, in process or progress uh the one thing i want to highlight is that the madden 21 closed beta it's a, a no capture zone and that's just a reminder to not record stream photograph or otherwise capture any part of the closed beta per the agreement that you sign. Doing so will result in the removal from the closed beta. Um, yeah, I wanna say, you know, um, I feel like a dad when I say this, that I'm like very proud of the community when they don't do these kind of things because it just, it really helps us kind of push the cause for doing more stuff. Um, I will say that uh, I, I did see some videos out today where maybe that information is not being highlighted uh, in the user voice platform. We'll make sure to go ahead and clean that up. That's a work in progress. Uh, so we're still working through all of that. Um, this That graphic that you see will actually be in game. So huge shout out to Jess and Domingo um, and all those folks on the, on the UI team that helped us kind of get that messaging there. There's gonna be another message with a URL where you can go leave that feedback. Um, and also it will provide a QR code so you can scan that and go give feedback. We really do value all that kind of stuff. So um, that's pretty much it, Clint. I don't have anything more at this time. Um, is there anything else you wanna share before we go ahead and, and wrap it up? Uh, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for joining us. I can say at this time last year, Kralo and I were doing the, uh, the stage interviews at EA Play. And I can definitely tell you that that felt easier than organizing this from home. Uh, so thank you for hanging with us. I'm sure it, was, it wasn't it was perfect all the way through, but uh, Kralo and his team really, really did all this. So thank you, everyone. Really can't wait to start Madden 21. Uh, looking forward to it. Clint, I really do appreciate it, man. And uh, definitely this is, this is kind of just a whole new experience of putting the stream together, trying to have a Zoom call going, managing through everything, talking to the audience. Um, you guys are amazing. I, I, I don't have the chat up, but I, I'm seeing comments from our team members and you guys are great. I really do appreciate uh, you guys coming here and getting more context on some of the stuff that we shared. We didn't do it the same fashion we did last year, but we kind of did things a little bit differently with Grady kind of releasing that uh, gameplay deep dive uh, blog, which was awesome. Grady, I know if you're watching, uh, you know, I have to say the voiceover was on point, um, but also it's great to kind of give some context, give you guys a little bit more stuff. Uh, stay tuned to Gridiron Notes. There'll be more information about other things happening in the game. Uh, as we have dates for that, we'll go ahead and share all that stuff out there to you guys. But again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back uh, hopefully here in the near future. Talk to you soon. See y'all.